In this video, I want to talk about some of the challenges with project and product documentation. One of the project management challenges that I see in any project is the use of version control, sharing of documents, and basically passing around independent documents that lack any way to effectively collaborate or have the most recent version. Uh, you think back to any of your projects where maybe you've created a document in Excel or Word, somebody creates that document, sends it out via email, and asks everyone to review it. Well, at some point, someone makes a change, and you start wondering, well, who's got the most recent Excel file? Or who's got the most recent Word document? And everything is out of sync. So the whole ability to do version control becomes a challenge across a team unless we have a single way to collaborate off of a common platform. Um, and then often I get the question, uh, what's the most recent version of the document uh, coming to us so we can help drive a discussion or, or solve a problem by looking for, by providing the most recent specification or meeting minutes or any other related documentation. Uh, also, when you create project documentation, let's say you're putting together functional specs, technical specifications, maybe a runbook or any support documentation. Those all seem to take a lower priority in a project. You know, the team is always focused on delivering the launch, getting to the next release, and the time to do documentation in a quality manner uh, often takes a back seat. And you know, often the documentation you pull together, it's results from different attachments, embedding them into a Word document, or putting them up on a file drive or a shared uh, drive, and then zipping those files and sending them along to the support team. You know, some, some recommendations that can help with project management challenges with managing your documents, as well as getting delays in documentation, is, is really to start looking to use Confluence as the documentation repository. Um, so I encourage you to actually develop the documentation using Confluence as the main hub as the project progresses across various phases. So I've been on large programs where we've used Confluence to evolve the project requirements, document diagrams, build organization charts, and even build the support documentation and the runbook all within Confluence. This way, we stopped working on one-off documents and worrying about who had the most recent version, and we really were able to start collaborating in the Confluence tool. Uh, you know, instead of sending emails, you can use Confluence to create a page and you actually can manage the discussion uh, in the page comments. So there's no more need to do searching the inbox for the, the latest comment or who had the latest viewpoint uh, on an open question or in the document. You see, even in this document that I'm showing you here, which is a Confluence page, uh, here we were able to have a collaborative discussion around changes to this document that each team member can log in and make modifications. Um, also, what's nice about Confluence is you can use the inline comments feature. This allows you to just highlight uh, a piece of text and you can add a comment accordingly uh, in here. And then we can have a whole discussion about the, the comment or the, the data, data that's present on, present on the page. You also use Confluence uh, instead of sending those documents. So documents themselves, they can be attached in to a Confluence page. So here's just one example where I have all the images on this page, as well as any of the, the Word documents or attachments. Um, but I, you know, I encourage you, instead of attaching Word documents, use Confluence as the document where you would uh, create the information and get away from actually creating separate attachments. Um, so by creating a page in Confluence, instead of using Word, PowerPoint, or Visio, you're able to centralize all your information uh, and keep it in one area. Um, also, another really useful feature is being able to create either process flow diagrams or architecture diagrams or any type of diagramming tool that you would be using. You can actually embed those and use them directly in Confluence. So there's a variety of tools that are out there that are cloud-based. So if you're using Lucidchart, using uh, Giphy, or you're using SmartDraw, these all have direct integrations into Confluence. And instead of using Visio to save the version to your local drive and then loading it to a page, you can actually go right into Confluence and create these, uh, these, these live documents uh, online. And so it makes it very easy to develop process flows and other architecture diagrams. Um, so I'll show you here in this video demonstration of how we do that. Mm -hmm. 
In this example, I'm going to show you how easy it is to draw an org chart within Atlassian Confluence once you've integrated your diagramming tool with the Confluence solution. In this case, I've added the Smart Draw connector to Atlassian Confluence, and I'm just going to click or do the double slash for the macro, and I can click the Smart Draw connector. Or you can also go through the menu here and select Smart Draw as you need to go through the macro uh, selection process. So at this point, Smart Draw will fire up, and then I can go ahead and create uh, any type of diagram I would like. In this case, we're going to create a team organization chart, and we're going to do a simple uh, two-level organization chart to represent the project. So now I'm still working within Atlassian Confluence, but it's integrating with Smart Draw to pull up uh, the template that we want to we want to leverage. So here you can specify who your project manager is. Yeah, and perhaps we have a typical uh, organization where we're doing reporting, we're doing uh, integration, and I'll have a reporting team. I'll have an integration team. And finally, we may have somebody here that's working on, um, say, over, overall configuration of the software or the solution. You know, this is typically where you get into UX, UI. So user experience, user interface. And so I've very, very simply added uh, additional boxes to here as well. So I can come up with another part of the organization chart. And let's say we're going to have someone do just basic configuration. So you know, here, if I want to add a resource, I can add Sandy. And I can come over here and add Alex. As you're very quickly building your organization team uh, within within the solution, and then if you have an integration, we get Hussein, and we have Steve. And so I'll just continue to call out. And you can add people's titles. You can add their their roles and their specific roles within the organization chart. Um, you know, and maybe there's always quality assurance or QA. And so here you can add your team members this way. So it's a very quick way to just build an organization chart within a diagramming tool. And here I'm going to go ahead and just save this. So at this point, I don't have to do anything more with the diagram. I don't have to export it uh, into a PDF file. I don't have to create it in a different Visio document or a PowerPoint document. What I can do is just click Save. Uh, when I click Save to Confluence, now SmartDraw will go back in and integrate that diagram within Confluence. So this is just another you know, real useful way of going through and using a collaboration tool and embedding meaningful diagrams within Confluence without having to add additional attachments. So one final step, I'll go ahead and publish the page. And now we have a working organization chart that is all part of the project and product documentation. You'll see here in this other example, I've included uh, diagram documentation. Uh, so instead of going into Visio and attaching the document and, and uploading it as an image, these are actual workable and editable diagrams. So if you want to make changes to a process flow, if you want to document what your overall system architecture is going to look like, you can very easily go into SmartDraw, click on the application, and as this viewer renders, right now I'm just going into a view mode, you do have the options to go ahead and edit that if, if necessary. So here I'm just viewing the diagram, but once you go into edit mode within Confluence, you do have the option with that Smart Draw connector to go ahead and modify this diagram uh, and collaborate this way. So this is just another way that I found it to be very useful in working and collaborating on documents in the cloud you know, without having to swap attachments, uh, email an additional attachment, load it to the drive or load it to the server. Um, you know, and better yet, you know, I find it just, just useful that we can embed these tools within Confluence and work on the solution together. So here you see it's loading. And you know, if I want to go ahead and modify this document, I can do that accordingly. I can add additional labels. And when I'm done, I can go ahead and save it. And I just close the document and I'll go back to Confluence.
All right, some additional features to consider with Confluence is you have versioning is available with every change, and you always have the ability to revert back to previous versions. So you don't have to worry about who's got the latest version because it's always here within the Confluence space. Uh, you also have automatic notifications for any document changes. So if you want to sign up and be a watcher, you can watch this page and get a better sense of when changes are made. And so if there's a key issue or a key requirement you're trying to track and manage, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, also, another really neat feature is being able to share the link to the Confluence page versus PDFing this and sending it as an attachment. Um, you know, finally, some other benefits to consider. You know, by using Confluence, you establish one source of truth for all your project documents. You can you centralize the communication. So instead of searching for emails or what I see now as a popular trend is using Slack or WebEx Teams or other instant messaging functions where you're searching for who said what in the latest chat, you actually can put those types of conversations here on the Confluence page. Another key benefit is transparency. So you know, all team members know where the latest information is, as well as it helps establish easy documenting features. Um, so each of the features that you see here in Microsoft Word, you have very similar features here within Confluence, uh, even including simultaneous editing. And just one other bonus tip for you, you'll notice that uh, this entire presentation was actually delivered in Confluence. So instead of using a PowerPoint format or another way of presenting the information, it's all here within one Confluence page. And I'm able to walk through this page and talk about these same concepts without having a bunch of slides or animations. Uh, this was actually a tip that I picked up when I went to the Atlassian Summit. Um, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about other tips you can use with Atlassian Confluence, I encourage you to visit tacticalprojectmanagement.com. And here you, there's a variety of tips and articles all with on Atlassian Confluence.